I scramble to follow him out of the door, feeling more annoyed than sorry for him at this point. Uh, where are you going? Flynn doesn't say anything as he walks up to the truck and yanks open the driver's side door. He slams it shut just as I walk up to the door. What the fuck? He finally does turn to me, then, shifting the toothpick around in his mouth before he speaks. What? What do you mean, what? You can't just... take off. Why not? Flynn arches his prominent brow at me, and I struggle to think of what to say. It's not like he owed me anything. I didn't stick up for him all the way back there. Was he expecting me to? As far as he knew, I just needed to get my project done. I... I just... thought you could give me a ride. Yeah, like, you know, like, last time you, like, left me at, like, you left me again at, at, the, at the convenience store? At the store. convenience store, you just abandoned him. You gonna do that to me again, Just has to Flynn? walk. What the fuck, Flynn? You can't abandon me, like, the, twice in, like, the, two days. The second time in two days that everyone's just gonna leave Chase behind. Maybe they don't like, have, do? have a much better time. Maybe that's the secret to this game. Yeah. Is the, the, the happy ending is when you just don't interact with Chase for the entire route. It's like a... It's like a butterfly effect. This is a spoiler for butterfly effect, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I remember it's butterfly a really, effect? It's a really old movie, so get over Starring it. Starring the guy from the 70s show? Uh, yeah, Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> uh, where he... The best outcome is if he was never born at all. Like, that is Chase. Maybe they would all be happier if Chase had never existed. <laughs> R.I.P. All the Chase stands. R.I.P. Butterfly effects. <laughs> no, no one remembers that. You can't trick. You can't trick. That's not even a real movie. The it was. It was a memorable. The bad best movie. reality was the movie. The universe where Butterfly Effect was never <gasps> born. Whoa, meta. Whoa. That's the director's cut. <laughs> Flynn smirks at me. Where? The mine. You serious? I mean, it's a few miles away. You know it's sealed up and everything, right? Well, yeah, but it doesn't mean I can't get a few shots of the outside. Flynn sighs heavily, and that annoys me more than anything else. Whatever, man. I turn around and start heading up the road, not even sure if it's the fastest way to the mine. For the next ten seconds, I walk briskly up the road, but Flynn's car doesn't start up. I already know that he's going to relent before he says it. Fucking hell. Hey! I turn around, trying not to smile. What? You know what? You know what? Get in. I try not to look too eager as I make my way over to the passenger side and hop in. Hee 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 hee, I'm getting in Flynn's car. Think you're smart, don't you? I roll my eyes. I don't think anything. Ever. You're the one <laughs> shooting yourself in the foot all the time. Whatever, man. Okay, okay. Flynn, Flynn shouldn't be so sassy about this, because it's not even as if... So technically, Flynn doesn't have to drive us through the mine. He's got to do anything for us. But at the end of the day, somebody gave us a ride here, and somebody left... Like, you guys can't... I'm the, Everyone's just abandoning us. You at least owe me a ride back to my car, because I got a ride, presumably... Yeah. Oh, no, I got a, you got a ride from Leo, not from... Flynn. But it doesn't matter. The whole point is that somebody gave me a ride here and now I have no ride. Yeah, twice somebody, I'm supposed to just walk home. Somebody owes me a fucking ride. It doesn't have to reach the mine. At least drive me to my car. Like, I know it's a small town, but fuck, it's hot. <laughs> yeah. Why do I keep getting abandoned here? Are there rattlesnakes out here? I don't know how that works, but <laughs> maybe. I stare through the bars of rebar into the darkness of the old mine. There's a damp, cold breeze coming from the inside. But all I can smell is dirt. Yep. Beautiful, ain't it? Might as well just slap that mine jail on our flag. Represents the town pretty good. The mine jail? The, the bars? The mine jail? A mine palace? <laughs> the like, mine palace? Uh, it's where Benedict Cumberbatch gets all of his ore. What? From his memory, his mime, pal mime, mime palace. Wow, I took that in another location. I, I was thinking of Yik. Oh. 
Because you probably never watched Sherlock, huh? No. No. It's not It's not oh, good, well, no, but, but it is Sherlock iconic. Sherlock has that whole, like, well, Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> like, the book. They have that, that whole thing, with your memory house, where you go into your memory house and you, like, yeah. look through drawers to find the but things that, you need but to in, remember. But in the, in the BBC Sherlock, they, they, try to, they try really hard to, like, stylize the memory palace. And it's also, like, a physical location in his mind that they, like, shoot on set and everything. That's pretty, uh, that is kind of cool. The, uh... Every single part of BBC Sherlock is massively, massively overdone. Like, it, they always go too far. Like, there always is, like, oh yeah, we have this whole location on set that's his, like, mind palace where he imagines things, and there's all these on screen graphics to explain, explain every part of him, like, thinking stuff so good. Look how he thinks so good that it's like, it's like a computer visual in his brain, and like, they do stuff like use like the same technology used to, to film parts of the Matrix, but it's just like random shits happening. Like everything, every part is over budget and overshot and over designed. Like that's this. It's so extravagantly expensive of a show, but that they're like, they, they're like if you can sense that they just have, were given money and need and just want to spend it and didn't necessarily have like things in the script that would justify it half the time. It's a wild experience. It's a sensory overload show. I mean, sometimes less is more, you know? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> like yes. in a Sherlock story. <laughs> <laughs> Which is mostly people talking slowly in a room half the time. Yeah, the only things I know about that are from from you and from Sarah Z, because I like her fan, yeah. her fan fiction videos and shit about the fandom, which I find probably more fascinating than the show even would be to me. BBC Sherlock is worth watching under the understanding that it's bad. In the same way that it's worth understanding, thir is it worth watching Thirteen Reasons Why? I, especially I since, tried. Especially I since, since get into both that. of them eventually hit a final season that's so completely unhinged that it justifies the entire previous experience because of how incredibly bad it is. Like Thirteen Reasons Why becomes an insane parody of itself by the end. I'm actually like, I can't believe it's real, and I need other people to experience it just to confirm that my memory has existed. <laughs> Maybe. Specifically season, uh, four? Yeah, because 13 Reasons Why season one is the premise everyone already knows. Season season two is the same premise again, because they're like, fuck, how do we make another season? Uh, there's 13 more tapes, there's 13 more reasons why, haha! <laughs> and they literally do that, they ret like, to the point where they're rewriting and retconning half of the story. Seems counterintuitive. Just to do 13 Reasons Why again. But then they just give up and throw Hannah in the garbage, because she's she died before the show started two seasons ago, so... Then they just invent a murder mystery out of nowhere. So season three is a murder mystery where a new character you've never met before is like the perspective, uh, like framing device character for the entire story. And the entire story is cu cutting between black and white past scenes and future current, like what happened, how, who killed him scenes. And that's stupid. And it's a bad <laughs> season. But then season four loses its entire fucking mind. And it has like Molotov cocktails and hacking and dissociative identity disorders. And people like just it loses. There's a haunted episode. <laughs> it's so it's like it's full on like it's what I imagine Riverdale's like. <laughs> like the fact that 13 Reasons Why of all shows went that off the rails is incredible. It's just like. They just kept going back, like, season one did well, I guess we gotta make more of this. I'm like, but it was based on a book that had an ending. Fuck you, make more. I'm like, what? <laughs> and it just loses its entire mind. It's actually, like, season three is unwatchably bad. Season four is incredible. It's horrible. It's mind-blowingly wild. And and somehow... Can I just watch season four? Do I have to watch yes, season one through three? Yes, technically you can, but you won't have the full impact of how unhinged it is that uh. this is that show. You won't have the full impact of how unreasonable it is that this is what that show was, because it'll feel like the it'll f it'll feel like too much like it's the normal if you watch it first. You'll just think like, oh, this is just one of those weird, unhinged, nonsensical CW shows, and not like the show that started off as being about how it's like here's here's how bullying leads to suicide and whatnot. <laughs> like, it's a show about a suicide. Like, that's the premise of the show, and it's well, supposed I, to be really dark part. and serious and somber, so the fact that it, it, it goes that far off the rails because they just kept making more of it is insane in that context. Uh, I'll just, and somehow, I'll, I'll... somehow, the final episode, most of the, most of the final season, but also especially the final episode of Sherlock, is worse. Really? It's so much more unhinged than even what 13 Reasons Why does. It is actually, like... 
this, the final episode of Sherlock is so unreasonably bad that it single-handedly deleted the show from existence. <laughs> like, they just, it was, they just never made more. It didn't, they didn't end the show, and they didn't technically cancel it, but that episode was so astonishing and impossibly bad, with so many unhit, like, I could say spoilers about it, and they would sound like I was insane. <laughs> and, like, it, it's, it's, it's iconic. It's incredible. It'll, it'll stick in your mind forever because of how unreasonable that episode is. It's actually insane. That's, that's like, like I'm saying, man, that's like when I explain an episode of JoJo's. It's the yep. same thing. Yep. And then the dog. <laughs> where, where I have this whole sentence and, and the whole sentence, it's a whole paragraph and it makes yep. no fucking sense. I do like things like that. I like, yep. unhi I like unhinged things. Yeah. But, I, but I'll have to watch... Oh, maybe give it a shot after I rewatch all of Degrassi again, because boy, <laughs> I love that shit. But anyway, we're in a mine now. <laughs> anyway, we're in a mine Flynn now. Flynn leans against the truck, chewing on another one of his toothpicks. There's an unsettling feeling about the whole place, and I'm kind of glad Flynn is with me because of it. Cause he's a big scary man. It's a good three miles from town center, and the gravel road is deserted. Our only company is a few crumbled ruins and foundations scattered every 20 feet or so. The only sign of modernity is an oddly placed long patch of asphalt and two tall lampposts at the end of it. The town had tried to turn the area into a tourist destination a decade ago, but the recession put a hard stop to that. That seems to be a running theme of the town's history, progress halted by outside forces. Don't you have some say in that? Oh, the flag. From before our tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I mumble absentmindedly, messing with the settings of the camera. Uh, no. I'm the clerk. I just mess with the records and shit. It's still hard for me to imagine Flynn working in that position. I can see it. Shouldn't you be there now? It's still before five. Maybe, but why bother? What? He looks up at me, toothpick bobbing around in his mouth, eyes wide as he shrugs to soft jazz. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> what if that doesn't time with the audio? What if, what if you're slightly off? It's hard. Uh, what if what, what if I'm not in sync? We'll be in sync. Will it be? But yeah. I don't know how your technology works. No, it's, oh, I'm so happy. It's so good to not deal with syncing anymore. You have no idea. I don't. You have no idea how much easier my job has gotten in certain ways over the years. Because I used to have to, like, manually sync every recording. I, I thought that's and what you And if I do. got it wrong, the whole video would be fucked. Nowadays, it's just OBS just has it. We're good. Shit's S lagless, sick, bruh. Sick, bruh. <laughs> like, like oh, when, when, the, when the lagless Elgato came out, that didn't have, like... It used to be that if you were recording video of a console game with the Elgato, there would be such a delay that you had to man- like if you were streaming it, to manually figure out what the delay was and program your software to delay the game footage and audio so that it would sync up with your commentary so that you could stream it to people. But also like you'd also like if you're recording like yeah you, you just have to like start the session by opening up like the Xbox 360 menu and we would just we would open that up because that was the one universal thing that every Xbox 360 game had was that one menu that you read press the that dashboard button mm -hmm. and we, then we just like go uh 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 uh, 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 just moving up and down the menu and then you could sync the audio of us doing the noise with the visual of the menu moving and like you find the exact frame where it moves and then sync that up with the audio of the game audio going dick boop 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 like as you moved up and down and then everything would be in sync hopefully but you'd also do it again at the end of the recording just to see if it stayed in sync and nothing somehow got fucked up somehow and if something did then oh boy <laughs> it's gonna be you just got to hope you can figure out how to get it all to match up right and just check around throughout the video to see if it looks like it's in sync because it's just there's just so many weird shitty things i had to do but back in the day that i just don't even think about anymore like for this i hit record and then i stop recording and then that's probably and I'm, I'm probably recording based on how long the episode will be so in editing i'll just go back and be like okay cut off the dead air at the beginning and end and with this specifically because it's two microphones in the same room i have to do audio processing to make it sound better but aside from that i don't have to do much and most other recordings i literally do just start and stop and then just throw it into my editing software and like my editing software has 
a daisy chain of audio processes, like a, an audio bus or whatever you call it, of like, okay, here's how much you want to compress it, and here's the noise gate to get rid of any background audio so that stuff like clicks don't register, and here's the equalizer for how to change my voice a little bit, and that's all like set up in advance. So there's a whole process that I put the I put the, I front loaded the work. So now I can just drop in the clips, say where they start and end, and put the Patreon credits in. And that's the if it's Zelda, that's the end. If it's something that's full of cutscenes and dialogue, I have to go through and manually edit the dialogue uh, audio for all the conversations. But like, so many steps are gone, <laughs> and that's one of them. Is like syncing goodbye. Well, I am happy for you, Keith. The the uh, there's a lot of traumatic memories and a lot of ruined videos. The reality <laughs> of that is definitely lost on my little pea brain over here. Now now the hardest part of your job is dealing with my ass. <laughs> <laughs> He looks up at me, a toothpick bobbing around in his mouth, eyes wide as he shrugs. What? You think anyone's gonna notice? I get paid to do nothing. But won't you get... fired? It's an elected position. That's kinda sick. Well, uh... Unelected, then? It goes unchallenged every year, Chase. Dude, it's like being the secretary in, in like your uh, your high school student yeah. union or whatever. Like no one fucking wants to be the treasurer. <laughs> no one wants the, to do any of this. He's the only person that that's willing to do this job. Therefore, he just he gets tenure. Basically, he's just set. I was I was treasurer once for student council. Why? For, well, that's the thing is I did it and I was like I don't got control over this money. So I just <laughs> like it's, never again. So it's just a fake position. It's definitely a fake position. You're a kid. They're not gonna give you control over the school's fucking budget. Like, yeah, well, not the school's budget, but like the club's budget or whatever. The no, fuck it, that's school, it's, it's student events. council. It's a stu it's like basically the school. school's It's just budget. shitty little fake governments that people can put on their resume for their real government job, and everyone just cl collectively agrees to pretend it, it, it did something and meant something about you. I mean, honestly, I forgot I was the treasurer until just now. So. You just reminded That's me how that that affected even you? yes yes. I never did st student government, but I was I was in the yearbook twice. I, I wanted power, but I got I, the pow I got to choose who got to be in the yearbook more or not. Fuck. Oh, you. I, I was also in yearbook, and I also did student Fuck newspaper. Fuck you, Paul. I, I deleted your page. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, dude. Oh man. Okay, there was this girl I hated, and I I changed the letters <laughs> in her name, and no one caught it. <laughs> You're just bullying her. Well, she she was the only one of my well, I was gonna say my only enemy, mortal enemy, but I had several. But probably they probably didn't know because I was just so likable. But yeah. but no, no. One suspect Stephanie. Fucking that's I, how she gets you. I changed Dana Dana's name name to Daniel. Damn. And uh, uh, somebody did finally catch it. We had to put stickers in all the yearbooks, and it was my fault. <laughs> no one knew though. Now they do. Well, yeah, try to catch me now, fucking... Come after me, Dana Lee. I frown. Doesn't Flynn have any sense of duty? <laughs> you remember how you were talking earlier about, like, oh, everyone's a slacker. Maybe maybe uh, <laughs> Flynn is our most responsible representative here in Echo. Yeah. But maybe not. Who knows? Flynn takes a toothpick out of his mouth and stabs it in my direction. Hey, I didn't bring you here to get lectured about how to do my job. I've been doing it the past three years. Flynn shoves the toothpick back in his mouth. Anyway, I was kidding. It's- I'm part-time. I get my shit done, then I leave. So it's an elected position, but you're not salaried? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, so you can be part-time and be salaried, I guess, but yeah. it's, it's very unlikely. I don't think I-, I by part-time, I don't think he means, like, re like retail. Just, it just, like, it just, he doesn't have that many hours. But usually they don't give you people salaried positions if, like, part-time's not usually ever salaried. Yeah, I don't know. Technically, I had a government job at the water board, and that was, that was definitely hourly. And they gave me part-time. Yeah, but you weren't elected. No. I would have voted for you. That was, that was one of those really annoying jobs where, like, we'll give you 38 hours a week. And I quickly, because they want to pay you only part time, which quickly becomes a problem if they start sending you on expeditions. Because if you're out on a place that, if you're out on a day trip that has a return time, then like you could be out for way longer than they wanted you to be because you have to be out there, get all the work done, then drive all the way back, and it's all on the clock. So they would have to then go and re and re like reduce my hours throughout the week if I was based on how far how long I was gone during the the uh, the trip where you go out and get samples and stuff, because. 
they could not give me more they could not give me 40 hours they'd have to change how a job works so and they'd act like it was my fault and like i what the fuck what <laughs> doing the, i'm doing the work i'm supposed to do and i'm not even the guy running it i'm the person i'm the second person in the car <laughs> there was always the more experienced experienced person driving it and like actually doing the thing i was like the assistant like fucking pay your employees government <laughs> yeah i was getting trouble for going over but i'm like Come at me, dude. I'm like, at least I'm working hard. Hmm. hmm. I set the camera on my tripod and look through the lens. Don't hmm me. There's a good amount of satisfaction I get out of teasing Flynn. I mean, your cousin or whatever is the mayor, right? My aunt is. And so what? I knew it was his aunt. Isn't that like nepotism <laughs> or something? <laughs> we were literally talking about earlier. Yep. Flynn sighs heavily behind me. E elected. Bias. All right. <laughs> Just seems kind of, I don't know, like not a good thing. As I film, I can hear him really starting to grumble behind me, so I try to change the subject. Well, it's good to see you're still not smoking anymore. The toothpicks helping? Not right now, they're not. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> Flynn has smoked since he was a freshman in high school. I distinctly remember him offering me cigarettes when I was like 14. He always gets pissed off if I remind him about that, which I know, and so I did it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember that time? <laughs> remember that time of the thing you always get pissed off when I say? I pick up the camera and move it to a different angle. Well, maybe you could give, give bleh, maybe you could give Leo a few pointers. He doesn't say anything, and I close my eyes when I remember that what just happened with the wolf. You're terrible at this, Chase. You should go on more tangents like we do instead. Yeah. We're great at talking about random nonsense instead of the thing that people are actively mad about. <laughs> yes, we are. What's very funny to me is that whenever we talk about the tangents being too much and get self-conscious about them, people are like, no, we love them. But then people did start loudly complaining about them like 60 episodes in, like a couple people did. And I'm like, how'd you get this far and this was your breaking point? Like, how did you not settle into the, to this being the vibe? But also, like... I don't know, maybe, just, maybe just, we went overboard. Maybe that was the worst episode. <laughs> uh, no, the worst episode was the Jenna episode, because, but that was because that was the... Uh, we were like, fuck, this is mostly just the same stuff again, because we're redoing the route. And so it became a two-hour podcast thing with occasional new content. Yeah. But that's just what that vibe was. I'm like, well, this, I'm like, this discussion's fun enough that I don't want to just delete it. It's just what this episode will be. It's just like a weird two-hour bonus episode thing. But here's, here's a nice, here's a cool life hack to all of you out there. A reminder, you're on YouTube. You can just like skip forward if you don't like the conversation that's happening right now. You have that power. Don't the, the, tell the people, them that. The people who remember that power and use it uh, judiciously are the happiest YouTube viewers. <laughs> Like, if there's a particular thing you just don't love, just skip it. Instead but, of acting like everyone else needs to be deprived of it because you need, we need to take it from them because you didn't want it. See, but what they don't know is there's going to be a test at the end of the series. <laughs> so if you skip, you yep. might not pass. We're going to make a one-of-a-kind marrow plush, and only the person that can answer this 100-question <laughs> survey correctly on the first what try is, gets it. What did Stephanie complain about for five minutes in episode 48? <laughs> What is what what is the thing that Stephanie was afraid of sitting soggy in the sink? Which, <laughs> the specific, last which specific dessert food? <laughs> <laughs> which family member terrorized Stephanie the most growing up? What is Stephanie's dog's name? <laughs> most important question. I filmed for another minute, then turned to face him. I'm I, I'm sorry about what happened. Flynn doesn't look at me, instead choosing to stare out at the desert. Why? You didn't do anything. But I could have. And this project is why we're here in the first place, isn't it? Chase, no one cares about your project. It's just an excuse, just like Carl's birthday. How do you not get that? <laughs> no one cares about your project. No one. No one, Chase. Flynn sighs and finally looks up at me, his eyes all the more piercing under the bright sunlight. You know... One thing I can't stand is people apologizing over nothing, Stephanie. Sorry. <laughs> I frown <laughs> in real life. What does that mean? Yeah, you can apologize, 
But in the end, it's all you're doing is make all it's doing is making you feel better while fixing nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for being no, self gratifying so through you, apology. Man. I'm so no. sorry. <laughs> I glare at him, feeling my face get hot. Even more than it is in the desert heat. He shrugs and leans against the car, head tilting back and eyes shut against the sun. I stalk over to stand in front of him, and I can see a smile playing at the edges of his muzzle. Man, fuck you. On the last word, I jab a finger into his stomach. His eyes fly open, and he grunts loudly, doubling over. Jeez, Chase. Wow, fun, you are a wimp. I fucking stayed in this shithole for you while everyone else is having fun, and this is the thanks I get? How dare you not specifically gratify my feelings of wanting to feel better about my guilt? How- <laughs> it's kind of proving Flynn right a little bit. Yeah. Oh, so you stayed behind just for me. Why don't we fuck in the graveyard cave? <laughs> <laughs> I thought no one would ever say that there's, to me. <laughs> there's so much concentrated dead gay in here. Does it make you horny? <laughs> can, can you feel the can you feel the dead gay vibes? Flynn stays curled up, rubbing his stomach. His face is inches from mine, and still got that stupid grin on his face. Stupid sexy Flynn. Eight foot tall lizard oh, get, get fucked by Godzilla. Uh. <laughs> Damn you and your fucking lizard cock. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. Aw, oh, Chase, my heart. A little lower. Oh, he's actually... <laughs> he clutches at his, his chest dramatically. Ooh. He's got that, like, run his fingers down his chest expression. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, his shirt's already mostly open. He leaves it open for that expression yeah. specifically. Yeah. He uses it while he's at work. <laughs> when he's dealing with the old ladies who come in for files. Yeah, it's a much better pose than having the same crossed-armed Ransona pose that every VN character gets, like Leo. <laughs> yeah. More like your stomach. I poke at it again, but he reacts too quickly. His lithe torso bending out of the way. I like that word. Lithe. It's weird, but I like that. It makes me think, <laughs> it makes me think of like a cat. Yeah. You can't keep your hands off me, can you? I just fold my arms like Leo, glaring at him. <laughs> Lynn finally straightens up, looking around. Well, I'm not gonna do a repeat of yesterday. I've got a house, you know. We can just fuck indoors, you weirdo. Yeah, yeah, Leo, who has his car and his <laughs> his glove compartment full of used tissues, who also has a house and should just go to his house <laughs> instead of being weird and driving around town while jerking off. I wanted to say that he only jerks off in his car, but then I remembered, no, he, he, was, he was definitely having sex with Chase in his car, too, in the flashback. Well, that makes sense, because they were, like, teenagers... And I don't think Leo lived in his own house. Yeah. Leo has a house. You don't gotta jerk off in your car. Did I send unless you- Unless you want to. Did I send you that like Nine Inch Nails looking like goth ass like Leo and Chase picture? I don't know. It's from the same person that did, that's been doing a lot of my thumbnails lately. It's just, it's just, it's traumatic, but it's, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Well, then I'll have to see it. Yeah. I, I, lo I love Trent Reznor. Trent I really, Reznor. I, <laughs> I really do that. Stupid that wasn't boss rowing. That wasn't sarcasm. <laughs> you know, there, there's a there's an enemy in Super Mario World named after Trent Reznor. Yeah. Fun fact for the audience: the Reznor Keith already here. knew. Isn't it called like Reznor? Yeah, it's just the little Reznor. Triceratops. Yeah, that's what that's the one. In in the fortresses. Because there's, there's a few that are named after musicians. Well, like oh, some of the Koopa kids are. All, I think. all the Koopa kids are. Yeah. Wendy Williams. Woo, Wendy O. Williams. She's a hottie. Is he talking about how he fooled around yesterday? And that he's inviting me back to his house? Yes, Chase. He wants to plumb those depths. I, I don't like it being phrased that way. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> I like to move it, move it. No, 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 no. He, dude, oh my gosh, someone invites you over for like romantic, you guys and are gonna fuck. And he, put, he puts that on the radio. Burm, and you, burm, burm, what, burm, what burm, would you do? I mean, fucking... <laughs> Go. I mean, it's it sets the rhythm, right? I saw him put on Sade for me once, and I was like, oh. I can't. Although I don't, I didn't watch Madagascar, so I don't associate it with that. That's just a song that existed already. There's, I cannot not think of Madagascar, and thus I cannot fuck during it. I promise you, I never think about Madagascar. I saw I, the art I would style like and was like, not to. and never watched it. I would like not to, but 
I had some, I had younger siblings when that came out, so I was uh. all there. Or more specifically, his bedroom. Wow, thanks, Chase. You're a real Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> his genius. bedroom. Wow, that's like seventh base. He's gonna fuck me in his bedroom instead of like his closet or, or his, his car. Stairs. <laughs> like so many options in his house. M maybe he Leo just never thought about fucking in his house. <laughs> maybe that's why Leo fucks in his car because he thought that was the last base. We always fucked me on the dishwasher. <laughs> what do you <laughs> but, mean? But never the bedroom. His bedroom? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> I swallow. I don't want to look too eager. Like, that's the only reason I stayed behind. Chase, is but it? Chase though? is fucking horny as shit. And now we finally found the character that's ag aggressively also receptive. That isn't Leo. Because Leo was also would have been receptive, but you have complicated feelings. Well, Leo's a little bit needier. We have complicated feelings because you killed Flynn last route, but you don't know that. Or do you? <laughs> uh, does, maybe, does Sam know that? I, keep, I do wonder about stuff like that. Like, does Sam have any, like, dimension hopping stuff? Because as much as I hate... I love it, but I hate it. I, I hate the Zero Escape franchise. I love how much I hate it. Uh, <laughs> I do really enjoy the, like... The idea of characters being able to, in a visual novel, remember stuff from other routes and, and that affecting things. I just hate how a lot of it was... I just hate a lot of the actual story of most of Zero Escape. But, like, if there was a character that understood stuff between dimensions, that would be fun. That'd be a fun thing. So, yeah. So, you just, so, mm, too much clutter sometimes. Anime is, anime is very bad about that, yeah. and I feel like Zero Escape would kind of fall into that category narratively. Ow. Where it's just like, okay guys, I didn't need all these concepts. Whittle it down a little bit. You know, I'm a little hungry for cock. <laughs> you want to go out and get something first? Get those pants off? Flynn snorts as he gazes down at me. <laughs> what, from the diner? You know how that fucks me up. And you know, you know how, you I, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I think. You said you'd cook for me a few days back. I'd like to get grilled. <laughs> Dude. Just like trying so hard. <laughs> like... I, I was trying to think of another one, but all I think yeah. was, was get toasted. I'm like, that's yeah. not the same thing. Nope. Uh, get steamed. Yeah. Get steamy. How <laughs> like good are broccoli. You at... Yeah. You have any experience with a spit roast? <laughs> 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 like to get basted. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I can keep going. This is easy. Uh... <laughs> Stuff me like a turkey. <laughs> Flynn's like, I only got fish. <laughs> he, he doesn't catch. He doesn't catch any of it. He's like, yeah, like I don't what are you talking happening. about? I, you're really jumping genres a lot here. I have a microwave and a blender. Yeah, that would. <laughs> that reaction would mean he's just autistic <laughs> at that point. <laughs> just takes a little extremely hyper literally. Flynn sighs, rubbing a hand behind his head. What is this? Some kind of date? Was it some kind of suicide squad? <laughs> well, you said you'd prefer di- Well, you said you'd prefer dinner first before... I trail off as Flynn raises a brow at me. I said a drink. We can have that too. Wow, Chase really is just- <laughs> He's not even- like, every other route he's just kind of like- I mean, Flynn was so forward that how are you gonna walk that back at this point? Well, yeah, but- Like, that seal- that, that seal is popped. <laughs> You can't put the champagne back in. It doesn't work. <laughs> Flynn looks into, off into the desert again, thinking... Fine, but I'm gonna get you back for that poke. I smirk. Yeah, <laughs> As he turns away from me, his tail comes in and knocks against my crotch. It wasn't all that hard, but it's enough to make me feel... Feel it in the bottom of my stomach. Ah, oh, fuck, come on! I walk bow-legged for a few seconds as I move to gather up my equipment. And then my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Come I on. I honestly genuinely thought he meant his, his, his like, goods. I didn't think yeah. he meant his camera at all. I forgot it was even there. Because once again, they, I forgot the that they were... the two characters with dangerous tails. Uh, yeah, I guess everyone else's tails wrap, fine. Do you think they wrap them up? Wrap them up? Like, with each other. Like coil their tails. I mean, not to be like <laughs> over over analyzing, but it's like they have the least de dexterous tails of everyone here. Yeah, but Furrier doesn't care. I know they don't care. <laughs> everyone immediately has a snake tail. That's just how the logic works. 
Gila monsters have like the fattest, like it doesn't even fucking <laughs> like it's just there. It's it like drags. It just drags, yeah. <laughs> and then ot otters use their for swimming, so it's like muscly, but it's not like super uh, yeah. flexible. Uh, TJ would have like a he's got his little cat tail, so he'd be like Whoa. yeah, like a monkey tail. Yeah, and obviously the two. You got the fox and you got the the wolf boy. So those, those are, are good. whatever big dumb canine tails that wag and break them on the dryer because they're too excited. <laughs> he wagged his tail too hard. Now he's hurt. I'm so surprised my dog hasn't broken her tail. He, when she hits the metal railing, it your sounds dog has like... a constitution of twelve. She's a, she's she's yeah she's stocky. That wasn't a, I, that wasn't a very high number. I realized. I don't know. I don't. Forgot, <laughs> I, I forgot what constitution meant, <laughs> so I, I, I didn't know remember. how to respond. It was just a bad example. The because uh, in D and D, it's average is like ten, so it wasn't that high. <laughs> I, 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 too, I, I thought out of ten too much, but that out of ten is not how that scaling works. It doesn't matter. He's a pro. This episode is a disaster. She, Everyone enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. It, sorry. We tried to get all of our tangent sorry. out by talking for two hours between the last two episodes, and it didn't work. It doesn't work. No. I don't think that was an equal exchange. That's because you ain't a lizard. Now hurry your ass up. He's got internal genitals. That must be convenient. You gotta, like, tease it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's an upgrade or a downgrade, honestly, over having junk on the outside. There might be a fun, like, game to it. You're trying to, like... You have to, like... Get, like work around it. Well, like it, like it opens like like bay doors, and it's like like I just imagine like some like <laughs> sci-fi type like like portal opening up. There is kind of like a gender play aspect to it, where it's like they the the character will like lizard characters kind of almost present feminine until like just fucking a, a foot of flesh comes poking out all of a sudden. Where's the fan art of a Salazzle with a huge, huge dick? Just kidding, of course it's there. I was gonna say, like, there's I, I, that so was a much Salazzle art. I mean, to be honest, I don't like Salazzle. I don't like Salazzle as a Pokemon, but I guarantee Salazzle with a, with a dick definitely exists. Yeah. But also, a very common... We're going to NSFW, but a very common no uh, element of uh, lizard and dragon characters is to uh is the idea that like they they essentially do have like a vagina essentially is like how it's interpreted well yeah and i guess and then you, I guess you so. play around with that or penetrate that and then but so do birds as a rap yeah but i'm saying like then then like they the any turns into an audi <laughs> and so there's like a progression to the scenario <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no i i get it my my little animal anatomy brain's like Thinking of the logistics of this, which I'm not going to get into. So. Yeah. Flynn's house is a ranch-style adobe home. He moved here only a few days ago, so it's my first time seeing it. It's an alright place. Housemate's quiet and keeps to himself, so it's almost like I have it to myself. You got a housemate? Well, yeah. Don't need a whole house. Saves a decent amount of money, too. We pull in next to a kind of foreign-looking faded yellow scooter. He's new to Echo. You'd probably like him. He's a big fucking nerd. Oh, oh this is, gonna, is our gonna, new character. Is he gonna be the route character? Yes. You get the voice of nerd. I hop out. The pavement warm against my pads, even though the sun is setting. It looks nice. Kind of like a smaller version of Carl's house. Carl's mansion, you mean? On the way up the door, I feel his thick tail bump against my own, though it's soft enough that I'm not sure if it's on purpose. This looks nice. Yeah, much better Give. than better than Leo's kitchen. Can I be Flynn's housemate? That's, I feel like there's several upsides. It's a it's a very well. You wanna fuck Flynn? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that a, is that up for debate? <laughs> no, because I was. Is that a concern? Because <laughs> I, I would live with Flynn too. Yeah, you know I'm, what like, I'm saying like he fucks and cooks, and his house is like this. Like look how fat that fridge that, is. That's a good kitchen. That's a good that's fridge. A, that's a better kitchen than we have. <laughs> Dude, like I said, make Leo feel bad. Yeah. No. <laughs> hey, remember your TV Leo's dinners, house is awful. Leo. As I go inside, I'm hit by a blast of warm air that's not much different from what's in, than what's inside outside. Nailed it. <laughs> I air out my shirt. <clears throat> Flynn notices and chuckles. Sorry, but you better get used to it if you want to hang out with a gila. Uh-oh. 
Deal breaker. Uh oh, Ke Keith's like, I'm moving out. Uh, sorry. It's a really hot house. I don't know if I can. I don't think I can deal. It's gonna get musky in here. As I follow Flynn into the kitchen, the smell is a bit strange as well. Kind of like sagebrush, which isn't a bad thing at all. There he is, Daxton. I don't know how. Okay, I can't. I've even seen him yet. How do I know what he's gonna sound like? Uh, he's like I've I've seen him before. He's like a he's like a, a bluish purplish like. Do we, you're gonna spoil it for the audience. Okay. Okay, I'll just say, oh, so I'm gonna use my Stephanie voice until I see him. Now, now I'm questioning what <laughs> Now I'm... you're like struggling. Well, I'm like, what's what, what is my voice what's sound my like? Voice? I don't remember. I forgot. That you, Flynn? Yeah. I have a friend over. Oh, one of your reunion friends? Flynn opens the fridge. We have any green peppers left? I hear a sliding door from the hallway and turn around to a somewhat startling sight. Oh, he's cute. Oh, he's got, um... A sleeveless hoodie. Chucky Finster's shirt. Is that what that is? That's what it looks like to me. My first... I was trying to think of what it reminded me of. It's like, I'm like, is that like a Toy Story thing? No, I think that's... Like, I'll... Someone... I could be completely wrong. Someone could totally be, be like, writing a comment out. <laughs> like, right now, be like, Stephanie. I would be so afraid to get to pattern <laughs> a character like that and then have to draw them in different poses and expressions afterwards. Hmm. Scary. I do. I do like him. He's neat. That's why they could live together, because they're both lizards. Yeah. Who would design a character with a sleeveless hoodie? Yeah. <laughs> who even wears those? A Someone tall... who wants to show off their arms. <laughs> a tall lizard comes in, but it's not his height that surprises me, but rather his coloring. Spotted blue with pale eyes. I then realize he's a salamander, not a reptile. I suppose I'd seen brightly colored amphibians in Pueblo, but definitely not Echo. And not even in Peyton. There's a smile on his face, and I try not to, to stare. Dax, this is Chase. <clears throat> He's pretty chill, I don't know. Uh, hello, Chase. Hi. I reach out to his offered hand before feeling the cool, almost slippery sensation of his skin. Yeah, sorry. I know you guys aren't used to salamanders around here. I cringe inwardly as I realize he'd caught me staring like a dumbass. Oh, no, I don't mind. Mind me being a salamander? <laughs> Chase is getting white personed right now. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I'm mortified, but he's still smiling. All right, Chase, enough making a fool out of yourself. Flynn's tossing ingredients onto the counter. Peppers, cheese, eggs. You can't help it if he's not used to it. Well, he's always bragging about going to college. Sometimes it serves you better if you just get out more. I'm not sure what to say at this point, but Dax saves me from having to try. Oh, please. Daxon sits next to me on a stool. That warm smile is still plastered on his face. Yeah. <clears throat> Flynn here was trying to sweet-talk a hyena a few months back. Oh? What do you, what, what you look like? Uh... <laughs> oh, was he also was he was he also wearing like like uh, you know like a sleeveless, sleeveless hoodie? Sleeveless hoodie. Like I, <laughs> I feel Flynn tense up before he turns around, pointing a knife threateningly at the salamander. Don't you dare! Refer to him as a canine. Like, isn't that something basic you learn in school? <laughs> I've had this conversation today. <laughs> Yeah, this does come up a lot for, for yeah. Keith in his life. For people that have not watched the Beastars essay or any other thing, this is a reoccurring thing of just explaining that, yeah, hyenas are not canines. They're just not. Every now and then someone's like, they're, they're like more like cats. It's not not really. They're not, they're not, more they're, like, they're, they're not really like cats either. They're just hyenas. That's their that's their kingdom. They're they're not more like or cats, file them or but, whatever. but hypothetically, if I was going to make a dog dorm, I'd put the, I would put them over there. Yeah. They, they can't have their own dorm. I'm, I made fun of this of the fact that the... Uh, yeah, I made fun of this because in Beastars, they supposedly are in dorms based on what family they're in. And I'm like, they they say over and over and over again <clears throat> that this is House Canaday. Hyenas are hyena day. Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not canines. Do you know how expensive it would be to have 
like that many different houses. They, they, just, have, you have, like, they just have horses like one and... room of hyenas. That's yeah, probably enough but for it's a, a whole room. dorm. So they just have like one room and they put above it like. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's the canon. I don't think it's the canine dorm. I think it's the can. I think they have a canine room. I don't think the whole floor or whatever is 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 canines. It seems like I, there's I, a lot I think of the them. whole building is is uh, carnivores, mm -hmm. but not necessarily like the, I think the rooms are just I think I think I think each room was just sorted by family. I just imagine like you get one like platypus. Yeah, like, oh, there's absolutely going to be some like, weird hmm, edge cases where you're like, what do we do with these people? I guess you just live by yourself then. You it's would, just the fact that the game, the, that all of Beastars constantly calls them Canada and never, ever, ever, ever acknowledges it as an exception. Like, because they could just be like, oh yeah, this is not enough hyenas. But they'd never mention it, ever. Yeah. So they, I just don't think they know. <laughs> no, they probably don't know. But it'd, be, ni don't it'd know. be nice if they had like little in parentheses. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, not technically, but like, you know. Like, yeah. doesn't have any friends, so he's here. Wow, Flynn, really? Flynn turns around with a huff. Sometimes you forget shit. He's trying to play it off, but I can see the frills in the back of his head flaring out. He didn't care anyway. We fucked, so fuck off. <laughs> wow, it's canon. <gasps> canon, Dex canon day. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> self insert, self insert. Uh, Daxton rolls his eyes before getting up and airing out a shirt like I did earlier. Well, I'm going back to my side of the house. It's a friggin' sauna over here. He passed me on the shoulder as, as he passes. Nice meeting you, Chase. And then he was never seen again. Good Patreon character. Bye. <laughs> I like. I watch as he heads back down the hallway, sliding, sh sliding shut the door. It's colder on that side of the house yeah dual habitat residence it's like a sleep number bed <laughs> it's like a, the fact that their house is like a whole ass like it sounds fucking terrarium. expensive it's, it's a i mean i guess the idea is that you just air conditioned some of the house and you just abandoned flynn to just have the outside heat and yeah he, and that's what he wants i guess so maybe it's cheaper. You just don't connect the vent or something. Well, a lot, I mean, even here, like you can close your vent. Yeah. And I do sometimes when like the it's my or like gets... speaking as a let's player who has to close a door constantly in order to do my job. The air conditioning does not care what temperature it is in my room in any of the places I live in. So it gets real fucking hot <laughs> whenever I'm doing my job during the summer, especially. Yeah, it's because it doesn't know how hot your room is because yeah. it can't. It both the thermostat can't, can't read your room. Yeah, I think it doesn't have the ability to change temperatures of individual rooms anyway, but also no. doesn't check this room either, so it just doesn't care. Well, it just checks the, the, the alternative house would also temp. be bad. Like if it was like, oh, that hot, that one room's really hot. What do I do? And then just made the whole house cold while still failing to make my my room any colder would be also be a problem. Well, in some beautiful futuristic scenario, you'd have like some really smart fucking demon Alexa that just knows yeah. what each temp of each room is and preferences and things like that. The solution would probably be to have like some kind of like try to f tr like you'd want you want to have like a window unit just for one, the one room but you'd also have to try to find one that's quiet enough to not affect my recordings and also be able to say with certainty that it will be quiet enough before you spend money on it. <laughs> that is hard to do. Yeah. I look longingly over at Dax's side of the house. Get your ass over here so I can teach you how to cook something. He's gonna teach you how to cook. Yay! It's all of my fantasies. The next hour is surprisingly fun, even though half of it is spent with Flynn yelling at me about how wrong I'm doing stuff. That's just like real life. Yay! <laughs> he calls it... Uh, Chili Rianos. Chili Rianos? Yes, I love those. I don't those. know what that is. It's it's peppers filled with cheese, exactly how he's saying, but like, I, don't, I don't get meat in mine. Like poppers. Like jalapeno poppers or something. Kind of. Uh, peppers kind filled of. with cheese and meat covered in egg before being fried. I want that. It's, they're fucking good. I want that good. Sometimes good. They, sometimes you get ones with batter on the outside too. I need to come up with more fun. Ones. I need to come up with more things that I can cook and I can easily find the ingredients for and I don't get stressed out cooking them. Which probably just means things that I can use the oven for. I need to get I need to get oven habits. <laughs> Cause I'm fucking stovetop stuff, I'm like I fuck it up so much. <laughs> it's fun to um, experiment. So it's like, you know, I'll make like, yeah. uh, I'll make sketty. <laughs> I'll make sketty and I'll be like, I'm going to throw some broccoli in there. I'm going to yeah. throw some onions in there. I'm going to, I'm going to put butter in there, but I'm also going to do cheese and lemon. And like, I just like to 
throw stuff in and then I, certain things work better and you just kind of experiment. Yeah. I'm just a baby. So I'm like, I'm an experiment with ways of cooking eggs. This is a base point. I was already fine. So I could be like, what if I added ramen noodles? What if I added pepper and, and uh, spinach and onions? And it's just none of the matter. Flynn's going to say. None of them are wrong. Flynn's going to be like, Keith, why are you just cooking onions? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is a regular occurrence in this household is I will cut up an entire onion and dice it and then I'll just cook the onion and I'll come home and from that, work and I'll be like, yeah, it's Keith's breakfast time. Yep, I'll just eat an, I'll just cook up an onion on a, on a on a pan. And then when that's about done, then I'll like crack eggs over that or something and like turn it into like an omelet that way. Just onion omelet. Yeah, there's variations like the uh, one of the things I'll do is I'll, I'll buy spicy ramen and I'll I'll cook up the onion and then I'll put, then I'll cook the uh, when the onion's about done I'll cook the ramen on the onion, and then I'll crack. Then when that's all wrapping up and the the mix is all set and the water's like running like boiling out, and or absorbed into the noodles and about done, then I'll put on low heat and crack eggs on that and scramble it up, and then I'll have like eggy oniony like spicy ramen for breakfast. Well, you can make yourself like a shakshuka kind of, but you just do like the yeah. The eggs in a casserole dish and you add veggies in it you just put it in the oven you can get yeah. pieces of get bread tomato paste you don't have shakshuka I mean, is good yeah you, you, you just gotta dice up pepper and onion and get some like tomato paste and a bunch of like garlic and you basically make like this really whatever. this tasty spicy paste and then you make the, divots in it and crack eggs into it and yeah then you put it in the oven and then you eat it with bread the more mushy the thing i'm cooking is the less i'm afraid of cooking it because it's like you can't overcook it yeah like it's somewhat self-regulates as opposed to like i hate cooking protein because i'm like am I, it's like it's, it's always too much or too little and i'm always worried that i'm gonna poison myself <laughs> and i, I inher- inherently always want to like turn it into like i always want to mash it up into being basically like hamburger helper so that it's just like small no. pieces that that cook correctly and mix in with everything <laughs> because i'm worried that i'm gonna poison myself before one more before i go on a tangent because this is a fucking good one and maybe you <laughs> should try this if you want to try chili rianos but like i make a chili i want this yeah i make a chili riano casserole which basically what you do is the you problem with frying those you need like a thing of oil huh well here check out how i do it. check out how i do it. so so i make uh you know like spanish rice just out of the box is easy. You just make Spanish rice. You make Spanish rice. No, I don't it, know it's just that means. it's just you buy it. it it's you like just mean, it's you just seasoned. mean like the orange rice, not the Mexican rice. Spanish oh. rice. It's, it's like seasoned rice, but you add you add a thing of diced tomatoes to it when you cook it. Like you get it. It's a rice roni. You can get it. It's really easy. Sure. It's, it, it, it I, tastes, I trust you. I don't know yes, what you're talking it's about. It's really though. good. <laughs> so you, I make that. That's a, that's a staple. It's really good in burritos and tacos and stuff. It's like, it's like the rice you'd get in like a taco. Like, I don't know. But anyways, you make that. You stir a ton of fucking cheese into it, right? Then you're going to take a poblano pepper, put some olive oil on it, put it in the oven, roast it, and then you're going to cut it into slices. Mix that into the rice with the cheese. So you have rice and cheese and you have peppers in there now. Then you put crispy jalapenos on top. And then you can dice up tomatoes and corn Lime juice and cilantro. You make yourself a relish. You put that on top. Eat it with fucking sour cream and uh, tortilla chips. I expect you all to replicate this recipe and send me photos so, of the completed thing on Twitter so with no context. It's good if you, if Just you, start if, sending it to me and roast... I won't know why because it's been, it's, it's, this is from <laughs> it'll be months in my future and I won't know what's happening. Just start just just tweet this recipe at me okay. over and over again. Roast, roast, roast an ear of corn with the poblano, right? So that we have them done at the same time. You take all the kernels off the corn, dice them some tomatoes, cilantro, lime, put it in a bag in the fridge while you're making the rest of this. Because it'll be all, yeah. it'll be all like salsa like. Why am I time. doing a call to action on Twitter? In the comments section, iterate on, St- on Stephanie's recipe. Give advice. <laughs> yeah, Spanish Let's rice, go. cheese, with a lot of peppers. And then you end up with like a, yeah, like a corn, tomato, lime, cilantro, slaw that goes on top. It's all marinated in lime juice. It's all like kind of like, you know, seasoned together. And then you eat it with sour cream. Uh, those little crunchy jalapenos and tortilla chips. It's to fucking the, delicious. To this day, almost every day in my comments section on my dashboard, someone says no reason. <laughs> and I don't remember <laughs> the conversation that led to that call to action. I don't remember and they just either, say but it I know every I did day. it. I know it's my fault. They just say no reason and sometimes they say a fish. Yes, a no fish. I, that's my and I'm fault like, too. What's happening? What did you do? It's still happening. See <laughs> This is you just put this is Stephanie's fault and yeah. I'll just be equally as happy. He, he, I love that. He calls it chili rellanos, pepper de, de fried. I want to eat that. Well, I never had that. 
any we're gonna, we're gonna we live that. next to we're, have you had it million somewhere anywhere you <laughs> we have I'm, we live next to so many mexican restaurants i can I'm find you one I'm in two seconds sure i'm bad at mexican restaurants i'd get it intimidated a little it's like it's mexican and like indian restaurants where i'm I like love. okay i'm af- i don't know what most of this menu means and i'm afraid to ask so i'm just gonna order a quesadilla <laughs> I'm usually, like I just, I just, I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know what most of these words mean. I'm kind of fucked. It's because probably good. I don't eat meat and I don't like beans. So most Mexican foods are kind of out for me, but chili yeah. rellenos, I eat fish. So ceviche is all good. And, uh, I feel like I need to develop a beans habit. I love probably, shrimp I feel dishes. like they're good for you and I should just eat more beans. I, I can't do it. It's a texture thing for me. Yeah. I don't like the brown beans specifically, but there's like very, there's other things I could try more. I have to agree that with Flynn that it's way better than the diner food, even though the food over there is still pretty good. When we finish, Flynn dumps the dishes in the sink with a clatter before snatching me up by the arm. And now we fuck. I don't make love, I fuck. (laughs) 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 Uh, Unless you want me to make love. I'm sorry, I'm sorry he would never he would never quote uh, Christian Grey. He quotes Fault in Our Stars. I mean, I love that that's canon. I put those in the same cringe category. So. I love that that's canon. I love that that it apparently was written by the by the guy that's in Nostalgia Critic videos. That's the best part that's about an all incredible that. Incredible factoid that he wrote part of Echo Canon. The yeah the uh Dave Walker's the 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 other guy who's in the videos wrote that little vignette. There's only, Dave, there's only two Dave of them. Wa- oh, Doug, you mean Doug, Doug, Doug Walker. Sorry, not Dave Walker. Sorry, Doug Walker. Doug Walker's cohort. Yeah, he's got, he's he's got, got two, he's got two, he's got two uh, actors that he hired for his skit show that failed. And the, d- it, the dude wrote the that, dude. Flynn's, that Flynn story. And I'm like, that's incredible. Fun fact for you <laughs> And all. he slipped in. And when I when I, so I was yelling at McSkinny, I'm like, Flynn quotes the fault in our stars. This is so endearing. And he's like, what? Because <laughs> he didn't know the quote. <laughs> that's great. It's really funny. He got snuck in. I taught him something about Echo. That's kind of funny, actually. Hey, shut up, Chase. I fuck. I I frown, but but allow myself to be dragged down the hallway to what I presume is the lizard's room. Oh no, don't drag me. I just expected it to be like a a funny like branch and then like a heat rock. Ah! (laughs) Like it's just a shitty little like lizard terrarium. Oh hell yeah. (laughs) It'd be so funny. Uh, all this padding and shit just against the wall just uncomfortable wall proximity and like the drape the the curtain that's stuck against the bed he just didn't make his bed yeah it's okay and it's not got too some, bad he's got, a, he's got like a little bed like i do where there's not much room it's small and simple but what i'm most focused on is the fairly large bed oh he disagrees with you ah! Ah! <laughs> it's a large bed look like how about the large enough bed <laughs> I don't think you, both of you can fit on there. It looks like a twin. I don't trust you. He pulls me in to make room to shut the door before pressing me back against it and kissing me full on the mouth. I open my mouth the moment his tongue prods in my lips. I'm not used to the feeling of something so thin and flexible sliding into my mouth, but it's not a bad feeling. Like brushing your teeth. <laughs> His long tongue easily entangles my Ooh, smaller one. Does he one. have the split tongue? Does he have a at, split tongue? At the end, I, probably? You know, you can control those, those sides independently. <laughs> at the same time, he his hands grab the bottom of my shirt and pulls it over my head, breaking our kiss. As I lean back against the wall, Flynn's eyes play over my body, clearly drinking it in. I narrow my eyes. Hey, you've already seen me naked. I reach forward, undoing his belt with a quick, jerky mo- motion- uh, movements. Flynn doesn't resist and instead stands there, smirking down at me. I give him a smirk in return as I rest my hands on his hips before slowly sliding them down, pushing the pants down with them. As his tail slides out the rear, I move my hands around to feel his ass as his pants slide further down. His thick tail twitches in response before I squeeze his soft rear, earning a gasp from the lizard. Are we going to ruin this again? I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, my brain's like, don't fuck it up, (laughs) Chase. I'm so preoccupied with his backside that I almost forgot the front. 
You can't forget the front. That's when the pants finally drop to the floor and I find myself face to face with Flynn's cock. I almost go cross-eyed staring at the tapered tip. I hear the lizard chuckle above me as he sways his hips, bobbing his length in front of my nose. What's that face? It's like you've never seen a dick b- Ugh. I clamp, I clamp my muzzle around it, egged on by Flynn's teasing. His eyes immediately go to my head. His hands? <laughs> his, head's immediate, his hands immediately go to my head, <laughs> steadying himself as he finally shuts up. I take it all in, almost gagging on the length. Damn, Flynn. Woo. That's, you know, it has to be extra long, not just by normal human terms, but because he has a muzzle. Yeah, that's a good point. So it's so long that it's getting past even more than normal to gag. That's why furry dicks are so crazy big. Because there's so much headspace to just go at it. That makes sense. Leo is the only other guy I've blown, and he's basically the opposite compared to Flynn. While he was shorter and thicker, what's in my mouth is now long and thin. I start to bob my head back and forth, suddenly self-conscious, worried that a pro like Flynn might see me for the complete amateur that I am. <laughs> oh. He's only ever blown one guy. This is his first time. Be nice, Flynn. Don't say what you're thinking about how bad he is at it, which he definitely is. Dude. Oh, no. Flynn, Flynn's so mean about everything else. I hope he's not mean about, like, sex, because, damn, that would fucking... I would, like, cry, he would, probably. He'd be so self-sabotaging. I don't know. I feel like he has enough sex that he must know better. I would hope so, because that would stop immediately if you're like, yeah, like what are you fucking doing? Like, if someone said that really seriously, he'd be like, oh no. Or like, at least give advice. <laughs> yeah, you have, to, you have to give encouraging things to do, not be like, what the fuck. His reaction though says otherwise. He grunts and groans, hips bucking and pressing into my mouth each time I pull back. I look up at his face, and I'm surprised to see him looking right back down at me. His eyes are slits, his mouth hanging open as he gasps. I blush and look back down, focusing instead on his lithe stomach, his faint abs st standing out a bit more with each thrust. For the next five minutes, the only sound is the gasping breaths from the lizard and the occasional thump uh, on, of the of my head against the door. You're just against the door. <laughs> Oh, that poor housemate. Dax just hears it down the hall. He's like, damn it. Flynn breathlessly apologizes each time. Oh, Flynn, may put your hand on the back of his head. <laughs> this is what easy a jerk. To, this is easy to fix. You can cushion this very easily. As it goes on, though, I can feel the muscles in, in his legs starting to tense up. F fuck, it's coming. Do you... Do you want me to pull out? Do, you have, do we have the choice? Flynn, that would ruin it. Oh no, that'd be the worst time to ruin it. Oh, you're right. You're right. He sees it in our eyes as Samuel takes over. As Keith and Stephanie decides as that he pulls out. Samuel want num nums. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> no, don't ever do that. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Flynn must be pent up. It, it always took Leo at least 10 minutes before he came from a blowjob, if at all. I feel Flynn, Flynn tense and start to back and start to step back, but I slide my hands up his thighs, squeeze his ass again, keeping him firmly in place. If Flynn is still trying to pull back, he runs out of time because I feel his length jump in my mouth. Oh, fuck! Flynn doubles over me sharply, his head slamming against the door as I take him all the way and start sucking. His thin body shakes against me, and I try not to smirk as I feel his clawed feet brush against my brush my knees as they dance around in ecstasy. He's doing like the the, the thing where your toes like all like stand out. Damn, Chase. <laughs> I must be decent. <laughs> yeah, I glance up at him again and see the top of his head, and a hand pressed to the door. His eyes are squeezed shut, and his teeth are bared as he hisses down, his hisses through them. His other hand is gripped tightly into my head fur, and with each suck he grips tighter. After about three spurts, his dick, his twitching dick, finally settles on my tongue. While Flynn is definitely quicker to come, it isn't quite as much as Leo, so I have no trouble getting it all down. 
We're trying to we're comparing them while you're yeah, fucking them. It's, it's all I can think about is comparing. I see his stomach rise and fall in front of me as he sag as he sags and gasps against the door. Oh fuck, Chase. I don't know what you did, but uh fucker. In the middle of a sentence I give him his softening cock another suck. He's sensitive. He yanks my head back with the, with the hand on my head, his his slick dick bobbing from my mouth. <laughs> I grin, but then gasp as I'm yanked up to my feet. Flynn turns with me towards the bed, made difficult by the pants around his ankles, and shoves me backwards onto the mattress. He grins at me as he slides his shirt back over his shoulders. Now it's your turn. I'm actually a little surprised that they kissed. Because you just thought, like, Flynn was going to be one of those guys that's like... No, 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 because they set up the venom and stuff. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, but I think that must be, like, he must, like... Control that? Yeah, it must not be a constant, like, horrible Komodo dragon bite situation, but instead, like, he has, like, a spit or something that he does, like a snake. I mean, yeah, that's the, uh, all logistically incorrect. That is, but... that, is a, that is a whole thing in Beastars with, uh, with Gosha. Is the name Gosha? Shit, it's been a while. Is Gosha the bear or the lizard? Fuck. You know what I mean, though, everyone. Unless you don't. In which case, uh, pfft, there's a character. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> a character exists. It'd be pretty fucked uh, up to be like, oh, I'm mad. I'm like, I... I'm mad at my boyfriend. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Goheen. That's the panda. Okay. So it is Gosha. But no, Gosha. That, I wrote a whole thing about that character. Uh, but in, yeah, in, in Beastars, this kind of thing is literally an ever-present threat at all times. Like, there's just saliva is just dangerous for those characters. So that does not seem to ap- apply to Flynn. But when they set up the Venom scene in the, like the truck scene or whatever, I thought they were setting that up. And that, so I kind of thought they'd never kiss. But I guess so. Next episode, Chase gets fucking railed. Yay! Chase bad and death by snoo snoo. Death by snoo snoo, I hope so. Mm.